Have you ever wondered what retirement actually feels like? What will it be like when you finally step off that nine to five hamster wheel? In this video, I'll reveal two shocking truths that only presented themselves once I'd been retired for six months. And if you stick around to the end, I'll share with you my strategies as to how to overcome them. Understanding them is crucial if you want to get the best out of your retirement years. Let's get into the topic. First up, let's talk about time. When we're working, we often wish for more hours in the day, don't we? I know I certainly did. And we dream about all the free time that we're gonna get when we retire. But here's the shocker. Time actually feels very different once you are actually retired. You realize it's not just about having time. It's about making the most of every single day. You need to replace work with something fulfilling and rewarding. Here's what I learned. Retirement made me see that my time on the planet is finite, which made me start to think about how I really wanted to spend my days. For me, that means spending time with my family, picking up new hobbies, reconnecting with old friends, and traveling to places that I'd only read about. For me, it also meant doing some work. I wanted to work so that I could use the knowledge that I'd built up over 30 years. I didn't want that knowledge to go to waste. I wanted to help others, people who were further behind me on the path. And I did this by coaching, advising and mentoring. I've heard it said that an effort to serve others can play to our strengths as we age. People whose work focuses on teaching or mentorship, broadly defined, peak later in life. That's one of the reasons why I started this channel. It took me a good six months to figure all this out though, to get my act together, to stop loafing around the house in my dressing gown. I could have saved myself a lot of anguish. I'll explain how later in the video. Now onto our second truth. Number two is health. We all hope to retire in good health and for our health to be good for the next 30 years. But the reality is our health is never guaranteed. Think about it. Why wait until you're 65 to start living? At that age, your health might not allow you to enjoy it. Surely it makes sense to make the most of your 50s. In your 50s, you're more likely to be in good health. You are more likely to be full of energy. You are more likely to take on more demanding things. Who wants to be taking long haul flights in their 80s? Maybe you do, but I'm 63 and I don't. I'm already choosing easier options. I'm glad I traveled in my 40s and 50s. I got to see parts of the world that I'd only dreamed of and I didn't want to wait until I was in my 60s, 70s or even 80s to see those places. I've got to admit that I'm more likely to choose Scotland now over New Zealand. Not just that, I've now got gallbladder disease. I'm waiting to have my gallbladder removed. It's already affecting the quality of my life. I'm now on a very restricted diet and I can't eat any of the foods that I would have been able to eat on my travels in my 40s and 50s. This makes me even more glad that I traveled when I did. None of it would have been possible if I hadn't have retired early. I've seen too many people retire only to face health challenges, challenges that prevent them from doing the things that they love. I also know of people who've died unexpectedly, like my father who died aged 74 after a short illness. He'd been retired 18 years, so at least he got to spend some time enjoying himself and traveling, which he did. Recently, a good family friend died at age 72. He'd been retired since he was 50, so he and his wife also got to travel and do the things that they've always wanted to do. All the same, 72 is far too young to die. I'm 63, as I said earlier, and I can't imagine having only nine more years on the planet. There's so much more to do. A school friend died a couple of years ago. He was only 62. He died from cancer. That one really hit home. I actually met my wife indirectly through him. He was one of her former boyfriends. He was such a larger than life character, and now he's gone. I don't know about you, but I definitely do take my health for granted. My gallbladder diagnosis has come as a bit of a shock. For years, I thought I was just passing kidney stones. It turns out for the last 10 or 12 years, I've actually had gallstones. Another friend I know has recently been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He's only 60 and any dreams he had for the next 20 years are now shattered. Do you know of anybody who's passed away too soon? Do you know of anybody who's had a life-changing illness? Do you want to take that chance? That's why I advocate for retiring early while you still have good health. It's about giving yourself the chance to enjoy the freedom, the freedom that retirement brings when it counts. I urge you to do it now whilst you're in good health. This brings me to my critical point. Retiring early isn't just a luxury. It's a necessity for a well-lived life. 
Both these truths about time and health hit me hard. They taught me the importance of stepping into retirement. They taught me the importance of being well prepared. And I have to admit, I wasn't well prepared when I stepped into retirement. So how did I tackle these shocking truths? At first, I didn't. I couldn't cope with the lifestyle change of being all in at work and then suddenly not being at work. It hit me hard and my mental health did suffer. It took nearly six months before the fog lifted. To get out of the fog, I started working on a plan and I also started working on my operating system. My personal operating system is based on six pillars, physical, passion, psychological, philosophical, people, and prosperity. I call it my six POS and I live my life around that operating system. It's constantly evolving. I'm constantly adding things to each pillar because as I age, my priorities change. I'm not able to do things now that I once could. I'll talk about my six POS in future videos if that'll help you. Leave a comment below if you'd like me to do that. I also started to make plans, a plan to make the most of my time. I created a bucket list, a plan to learn new things. I think it's important to develop a growth mindset no matter what age you are. A plan for my health. You have to prioritize your health. On the physical side, I lift weights, I walk, I practice mindfulness, I sleep well, and now because of my gallbladder problems, I eat well. The things I do on the physical side link also onto the mental side. Walking is great for your mental health, especially going on a long solo walk, which I like to do. Taking in nature and appreciating the awesome moments that you come across on a walk. I've worked hard on maintaining a positive mindset through my retirement years, always being optimistic despite its challenges. Don't underestimate the power of a positive mindset. What are your biggest fears about retirement? Also, what are you excited about? If you are retired, how have you approached retirement? Please share the answers to those questions in the comments below to help others. I hope you enjoyed this video and it has given you some useful pointers. Pointers on how to plan and execute a successful retirement. If it has, please give it the thumbs up. It will help share the video to a wider audience. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. In future videos, I'll be sharing more insights and tips on how you can retire by 50 and lead a fulfilling and rewarding life after retiring. Thank you for watching. And remember, it's not just about retiring early, it's about retiring well and making every second count. See you in the next video.